Welcome to this Wise Owl Answers video. This question came in on a video which explains how to save attachments from an Outlook folder. And for Marcelo, one of the attachments that he saves is a zip file. So what he wanted to know was, is there a way to unzip a file using VBA? And there certainly is. The code we need to write to do this isn't particularly complicated, but it's not immediately obvious how we get started. So let's take a look and see what we can do. To get started, I've created a new Excel workbook, saved it as a macro enabled file, and then in the Visual Basic Editor, inserted a module and started a new subroutine. I've got this workbook stored in the same folder as the zipped folder that we're going to unzip. My example is highly exciting. It contains a list of three empty text files. I'll let you provide your own zip file for this example. Hopefully you have a more exciting example to work with than the one I have. Also stored in the same folder as the Excel workbook is a regular folder called unzipped files, which is currently empty, set up ready to receive the files we're going to unzip. The technique we're going to use to make this work relies on the Windows shell. And just so that I get a lot of help from the IntelliSense and I can hopefully then better explain what's going on, I've set a reference using the tools references option from the Visual Basic Editor. I've referenced the Microsoft shell controls and automation library. So the first thing we're going to do with that library is declare a variable which can hold a reference to a shell object. So I'm going to say dim sh as shell32, which is the name of the library, and then the shell class in there. Then I want to create a new instance of the shell class. So I'm going to say set sh equals new shell32.shell. Now there are lots of interesting things we can do with a shell object. And just in case you're interested in some further reading, I've got a link to share with you from the Microsoft Docs site, the Scriptable Shell Objects article. I'll drop this link in the video description so you can find it more easily. So shell objects let you do all sorts of useful things like accessing the file system, launching programs, changing system settings. Of course, in this video, we only really care about the file system techniques. So the first method we're going to use from the shell is called namespace. And this lets us get a reference to a folder object. So we're going to create a couple of variables which can hold references to folder objects and then use the namespace method to get references to them. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'm going to declare two new variables. Let's say dim destination folder as shell32.folder. And then we'll also, if I just copy and paste that, have a source folder variable, which will refer to the zipped folder. So once I've created my new instance of the shell class, I can say things like set destination folder equals sh.namespace, and then in some round brackets, pass in the path to the folder I want to get a reference to. So this one's going to get a reference to my unzipped folder, which is stored in the same path as this workbook. So I'm going to refer to this workbook.path, followed by an ampersand, and then a backslash, and this is unzipped, and I'll try to spell that correctly, unzipped files. Close the double quotes and the round brackets. I can then do essentially the same thing to get a reference to the zipped folder. So again, I'm going to copy and paste that, and then I'll replace destination folder with source folder and then this workbook.path and the name of the zipped folder is called zipped files dot zip at the end. So having done that, we could just give the routine a quick test run to make sure that it doesn't fail. And assuming we don't see any failures, that's a good sign. So now that we have references to the two folders we need, we can simply copy all of the files from the source folder into the destination folder. And to do that, we're going to make use of the copy here method of the destination folder and the items method of the source folder. Again, just for your reference, we've got some documentation to help with that. So here's the reference to the folder object for the shell class. And you can see all of the methods and properties of that object here. So we're going to use copy here and items. And again, we have further documentation that explains how each of those techniques works. So the basic code we need back in the Visual Basic Editor is we need to refer to our destination folder and apply the copy here method to that. 
if we type in a space, we can see there's a single compulsory parameter, which is a reference to the item or items we want to copy. And the items I want to copy are from the source folder and the items method. Okay, so having done that, that's basically all the code we need. If we just have a quick check in the unzipped files folder, that's currently empty. But if we run this subroutine, have a look back at the unzipped files folder, we'll see that all three text files have been unzipped into it. One potential problem with this technique occurs when our destination folder already contains files with the same name. Just to demonstrate that, let's try to run our subroutine again. So this time we get prompted, we have to choose what to do with the files with the same name. I'm going to click the replace the files in this destination option. So that will copy over the existing examples. Now it would be nice if we could automate that and we can by passing a value to the second parameter of the copy here method. So if we have a look back at the documentation, if I scroll downwards, the second parameter allows you to specify a number indicating what to do in cases such as the files already existing. So I'm going to use number 16, respond with yes to all for any dialog box which is displayed. So if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, type in a comma at the end of this line and then enter the number 16 for the options parameter. So when I run the subroutine again this time, we'll see that I don't get prompted, the files simply get replaced. One quick way to check that they are actually being replaced, by the way, as these are just empty text files, there's not much of a clue that that's actually worked. So I could open up one of the text files here, type in something, let's go for wise owl, and then save it, and then close it. So at the moment that has some text in it. If I just run my subroutine again, and then have a look back at the unzipped files folder, reopen that text file, we can see that it's been replaced with the new copy of that file. Now the code I've written here is a little longer than it really needs to be. We can simplify this procedure quite a lot actually. The reason I wrote things in such a longhand way is because, well, first of all, it makes it easier for me to describe what's happening step by step, but it also helps us to identify problems when we have things broken down in such a fashion. But yeah, we can tidy this up an awful lot. Let's first of all get rid of the set destination folder section. We don't need to have variables holding references to the folders we want to apply our methods to. So I'm going to say sh.namespace, this workbook.path and unzipped files. And then I'm going to apply the copy here method to the end of that line. Then just so I can break this line up into a couple of physical lines of code, I'm going to type in a space and an underscore. And then on the next line, I'm going to get rid of set source folder equals, replace that with a tab space. And then at the end of that line, refer to the items method. Then I can type in a comma and enter the number 16 so that I can click yes on any confirmation dialog box required. And then I can get rid of the destination folder dot copy here method from the following line. That means that I no longer need these two variables, dim destination folder or source folder, they can both disappear. That's pretty neat and tidy compared to the previous version, but we can go even a stage further. When we have variables or classes that we're instantiating, creating new instances of with the new keyword, as well as being able to set the new instance explicitly in a line like this, you can declare auto instancing variables by including the new keyword in the variable declaration. So I'm going to add the new keyword to the declaration of the variable, and then I can get rid of the set sh line as well. So this simply means that the new instance of the shell class will be created when it's required. It doesn't create it in the variable declaration, but whenever we refer to that variable, if there isn't already an instance of the shell class, one will be created for us automatically. So just to demonstrate that this is working, let's manually get rid of all of those files from that folder. And then if we run the subroutine again, we get exactly the same end results, just in a much shorter, more succinct, compact way. One final change we could make to this code would be to switch from early binding to late binding. Early binding requires us to set a reference to the object library before we start adding our code. So if I head back to tools and references, I already referenced the Microsoft shell controls and automation library. 
if I uncheck that box and then click OK, it does now mean that I have to make a change to the variable declaration because the project will no longer recognize what a shell32.shell class is. If I attempt to run the subroutine, it'll say that type is not defined. So to change this, what we're going to do is I, if I stop or reset the procedure first of all, I have to change my variable declaration to say dim sh as a generic object. Then I need to use the set keyword again. I need to set sh equals and then use the create object method so that I can pass in the class of the object I want to create as a string. Now the class I'm going to create here is slightly different to the one I use with the early binding technique. I need to refer to a shell dot application. So technically I'm referring to a property of the shell class in this case, not just the class name. But um, and again, if you wanted a reference to that, by the way, sorry, I should have mentioned, um, here's the shell dot application property, which is designed for use with the create object method. So having done that, if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, let's just clear the contents of the unzipped files folder again. And then if we run the subroutine without the object library referenced, our late binding technique will work just as well as the early binding technique did earlier. Just before we finish, there is one tiny little gotcha you may encounter with this technique, and it's to do with the data type of the argument you pass to the namespace method. If we look back at the documentation for the namespace method, it tells you that the data type of that parameter must be a variant. Now in VBA, if I'm looking at what I've passed into this namespace method, I'm quite likely to assume that that's a string. But let's imagine we were going to break this out into a separate line. We wanted to store this path in a separate variable. If we said something like dim destination path as string, and then we said destination path equals, and then let's just cut and paste our destination path, this workbook.path and unzipped files. And then we try to reference the destination path in the namespace method. If we run this subroutine now, it fails. And it fails on the line, which is trying to use a string variable where we require a variant. Now in VBA, we shouldn't really care about this. VBA does a pretty good job at converting data types of variables and parameters. But in this case, if I hit the reset button, we must ensure that whatever variable we use to pass the path to the namespace method, we must declare it as a variant. So if I now run the subroutine again, everything works normally. Bear in mind that in VBA, if you wanted a variant, you don't need to explicitly say as variant, you can omit the as variant part and that will automatically create a variant variable. So that will also work. So there you go. There's the basic code you need to unzip a folder by copying its contents into a regular folder. I think that's enough to answer the original question, but if not, as always, feel free to carry on asking more questions and I'll see what I can do to help. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.